Okay, let's start the show. All right, we have a guy here from Canada. Canada, oh, Canada's here, good. Later on, I'll make you feel at home. I'll chop a tree. <laughs> anyway, right now, say hello to Maurice LaMarche. Okay, Maurice, here we go, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodney. All right. Thank you, well, that's great. I am an impressionist, and uh, people ask me, how did you get started doing impressions? I really had to watch a lot of television when I was a kid, and I cut my impressionist teeth on Saturday morning TV. Natasha, we must get moose and squirrel. Yes, Boris, darling. Fluffer and fluckatash. Oh, oh, my George, Quincy Magoo, you've done it again. Oh, oh. Phineas J, what be all the greatest? Come along, Chumley. The G, Tennessee. <laughs> okay, Fred, come on, Betty, come on, Bam Bam. Kaku, paku, puka, go, go. Gus, Yogi, I don't think the ranger's gonna like this. Oh, uh, well, fuck the ranger, boo-boo. I'm smarter than the average man. Yeah. As I grew up, I became a real Trekkie, and uh, do we have Trekkies here tonight? I just went out, I'm still a Trekkie, I went out and bought the uh, video cassette of Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. I think this was the best Star Trek movie yet. The problem I had with it was the guy they had playing the Klingon general in this film. Very fine actor, his name was Chris, uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, but he also plays Jim Ignatowski on the TV series Taxi. And for the first half of the film, you don't even recognize him. He's talking Klingon with, uh, with English subtitles. Halfway through the film, he starts talking English to William Shatner, and all you can hear is Reverend Jim. Uh. Admiral Kirk. Uh, you don't want to give me the Genesis device? Okie doke. Listen, you, you've been great. And before I go, I would like to leave you with a quick thought. There is a saying, um, kind of started in show business, but applies to all walks of life, and that is, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I believe that's true, and I hope that when I'm on stage, I am flattering the celebrities I imitate. I know I'm certainly trying to do that. I thought about it the other day, and it occurred to me that uh, no celebrity has ever really flattered me back, and uh, yeah, it's kind of pissing me off, to tell you the truth. I think if I could have any fantasy I want to fulfill, that it'd be to have a group of my favorite stars pay tribute to me. Hi there. Remember me? I just want you all to know that Maurice LaMarche is a very close and personal friend of my brother Billy. Maurice makes me proud to say that I'm an American. That's because he's a Canadian. Is he a comic? Jesus, I forgot. I just thought he was doing great with you. Thank you. I am... I am... I am Arthur. Uh, where the hell's my hat? I hate it when that happens. I race cars, I play tennis, I fondle women, but I have weekends off and I am my own boss. Hobson, do you want to run my bath for me? It's what I live for. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like me to come in there and wash your dick for you, you little shit. <laughs> He's worked his way up from the hinterlands of Canada into the heartland of America, and that's the way it is with Maurice LaMarche. He's a very nice young man, Archie. <laughs> well, Nancy and I just want to say we're proud to know this fine young man, and. Well, frankly, we wish our daughter Patty had, had married him instead of some flaky yoga instructor. <laughs> Maurice asked me to tell you that if you've enjoyed meeting him half as much as, as he's enjoyed meeting you, well, then he enjoyed it twice as much as you did. <laughs> Meet Maurice LaMarche, an impressionist who's lost control of both his vocal cords and his mind. 
You don't know it yet, but you've just passed through Maurice LeMice's own personal Twilight Zone. Thank you very much. You've been great. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Maurice LeMice. How about it? How about it?